so what I've uh, wanted to uh, address uh, in this uh, presentation uh, is really some thoughts and uh, questions, really, um, on the uh, relationship and the distinction between uh, traditional cooperatives with a, a designated uh, membership and uh, very often, you know, a geographic locale, and uh, platform co-ops and digital systems. And um, uh, so I've, re I've been reflecting on um, elements in, you know, traditional co-ops that lead to their failure. Uh, you know, structural elements, uh, elements around uh, member relations, around governance, and so on. And um, how those uh, factors actually relate to the establishment and operation of uh, um, uh, platform co-ops. And just to basically raise some questions and, and start a process of reflection and, and critical reflection on the degree to which uh, a conventional cooperative model can actually be replicated. Uh, in the context of a digital system and, uh, and uh, a platform co-op or an open, open co-op. So um, traditionally, co-ops, as many of you know, are composed of two uh, fundamental uh, dynamics. Um, one is around uh, social relationships and social solidarity, a, a community of interest among people that share social relationships, uh, uh, very often face-to-face -face social relationships in a community. And... Uh, economic utility, um, a group of people coming together, organizing a co-op so that they can provide themselves with some kind of an economic or social service or use. And so uh, social solidarity on the one hand and economic utility on the other, the two primary components of uh, traditional co-ops. And the question I was asking myself is, are both of these really necessary for the operation of a successful uh, cooperative platform, for example? Uh, and what happens when one of these is absent? What are the uh, implications for that? And how does that also relate to the survivability of the structure? Uh, this is not working. Do I just... Oh, okay. Great. Oh, I have to do it here as well. I'm such a futz. Okay. So, um, just a couple of... Uh, um, just to remind ourselves... Um, uh, what are some of the reasons that co-ops fail? Uh, poor management, um, poor access to investment capital, um, uh, very often the undercapitalization by members, underinvestment by members in the co-op, very often uh, risk aversion by members, uh, the absence of long-term commitment among the membership, um, the loss of member control, uh, or a meaningful de uh, uh, decision-making relationship uh, among members for the operation of the co-op. Loss of co-op culture and co-op education is, is a hollowing out of the social and cultural conditions that sustain co-ops over time. And the capture of the system by uh, managers or um, uh, decision-makers and boards of directors that really have um, a diluted interest in the co-op as, uh, as an uh, alternative, uh, collective, democratically owned system and are more interested or are more concerned around you know, commercial or success within you know, the market for the survival of the co-op. And then, of course, ultimately, poor market uh, performance. Now, these elements are, um, in my experience, uh, the most common uh, sources of co-ops failing. But the point I'm raising around uh, understanding those uh, features is that many of these actually stem from a failure of social connection and social relationship among the members of the co-op. Relatively few of them have to do with market failure per se. They have to do with the ways in which the members of a co-op actually relate to each other and how they create a collective community of shared interest, shared governance, um, and how they operate that system. So the question of the, um, the nature and the quality and the character of the social connections and social relations among members in a cooperative system is absolutely fundamental when we're talking about traditional co-ops. So how does that relate to a, a platform co-op or an open sort of digital 
a, a system that serves collective interests. Characteristics of, um, sorry. Yeah, so the, the, the question being, are platform relationships the same as face-to-face -face relationships? And how, if they're different, how does the difference uh, affect the viability of a co-op form, and in particular, the viability of a platform co-op? Um, a key question for me has been, how do platform co-ops actually create sustained social relationships uh, among users? And to what degrees is actually possible? Is, a, is an online a social network, uh, does it have the same capacity and quality and meaning for members in a co-op as it would in a conventional co-op? And I think a key question for me also is how do platform co-ops actually avoid being merely utilitarian systems? In other words, they provide a service or a benefit to, uh, uh, to members, but that's the primary attraction for participation in a platform, platform co-op. If that's the case, um, what are the implications for the survivability of this? And throughout the day, we've been um, uh, hearing a fair bit of commentary around the capacity and the meaning and the role of platform cooperatism as a vehicle for system change, for uh, initiating um, more powerful forms of democratic governance, for example, for planning and citizen participation in local community and reforming uh, public spaces of cities and so on. Um, but these are essentially political projects. And the question I'm asking is, um, can a political project be sustained uh, with a membership that is ephemeral? that kind of comes and goes on the basis of what the utilitarian system actually provides them in terms of you know, economic or other kinds of benefits. If there's an absence of this kind of social relationship and social solidarity that we find very often as the cement that really makes traditional co-ops work and especially passing through you know, very rough times, whether they're organizational or market or whatever, the social connection is absolutely fundamental. If that is not recreated uh, in the uh, modality of a platform co-op, how do they take on then these political campaigns and play a political uh, role around system change if those kinds of social connections are fundamental to that? It's a question. I don't have an answer to that, but it's something I think that is um, important to consider. And then all platform co-ops are not the same. Uh, they provide different kinds of services to their uh, users. Um, uh, for example, um, a, a, a platform a system co-op where you have a group of contributors to the design of a new uh, app or a software system um, isn't the same as a co-op, platform co-op that is actually used as an enabling system for the provision of information to doctors, for example, or the provision of healthcare services, or for um, facilitating and coordinating the provision of social services that are facilitated, facilitated through a digital uh, co-op system. So um, those kinds of uses, I think, have different implications for the importance of social connections, social solidarity, and social relationships. And then, uh, again, how do platform co-ops ensure fair labor practices among users because those two are essentially um, uh, an agreement to implement and enforce a series of social connections and relationships uh, uh, among users. They're not simply, uh, uh, the system doesn't simply provide access to um, uh, some kind of a, a, a utilitarian service, information, whatever, and then they simply withdraw when that is you know, uh, when they've received that service and then move on to something else. So, the, I guess the proposition I'm making is if a platform co-op is primarily utilitarian in nature, uh, is it also socially unstable? Um, if this is true, then obviously there's implications for the role that platform co-ops play in system change, in political work, right? Um, Regarding decision making and the direction of, of the system, size matters. Uh, the larger the system, the more complex the system, 
uh, the, uh, the larger the scale, the harder it is to maintain member commitment, uh, the kind of social and solidarity relationships that are so important for traditional co-ops. Uh, that becomes a very difficult proposition in very large uh, systems. Um, if, however, the platform co-op is primarily a utilitarian system for the provision of very limited and confined sorts of you know, practical services for the members and the users of that, uh, and it is not primarily a social uh, relation that is facilitated by the co-op, then perhaps that isn't important. But it's, I think it is important to understand the different uses and the different dynamics that are driving the design and use of these systems. And then finally, without uh, this um, social solidarity factor, the, the kind and the quality of social relationships that the co-op maintains among its members, how does that system prevent the capture uh, of the platform by uh, elites? Um, how do you hold people accountable uh, in those kinds of systems? Um, and when the social factor is important, and it is part of the culture and the meaning and the value of that platform co-op, how do you uh, um, enforce or uh, implement the kind of efficiency of large and large scales across these systems and still maintain the kind of social solidarity and social connection that is so vital to the culture and the operation of, of traditional co-ops, at least? All right, and I'll just maybe leave it with this. Um, the interface of cooperative practice and commons values is something that I and others, uh, many others in this room have been sort of uh, researching and thinking about and, and, and working on for a number of years. Um, but how do they relate to political economy in the information age? Um, and this is, um, I think, the... Um, underlying uh, dynamic that is propelling a lot of the interest and a lot of the passion uh, in uh, these conferences and in an assessment of P2P systems and, 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 and uh, platform co-ops as vehicles for substantial systemic change in our political economy. And I, the, the question I have is, to what degree is that actually possible given this dynamic between social connection, social solidarity, and the political dimension of that, and a primarily utilitarian um, uh, design and purpose for platform co-ops. So these are just things that I'm just really kind of wondering about and struggling with. I don't have answers to them, but I think we can draw lessons from traditional co-ops in their history of evolution and failure to try and adapt some of those uh, lessons to the um, intrinsic dynamics and designs of platform co-ops, particularly with respect to this connection between social relationships, social solidarity, and the function of economic utility within those structures. <laughs>